Hi, and welcome to Cappuccino with Amber. I'm your substitute host, Kelly, here with Stefano and the Guru. So the GOP nominee, Donald Trump, has been known to throw some insults around about some other people, but I think that he's been having a little bit of a taste of his own medicine, right? Yeah, definitely. So on Friday, Hillary Clinton was doing a rally in Oakland, California, and she actually struck back at Donald Trump, calling him the presumptuous nominee because last Tuesday during the Indiana primaries, Trump was named the presumptive nominee for the Republican Party. And so Hillary tried to kind of one-up him and call him the presumptuous nominee instead of... And this isn't even the first time that name calling has been used. You know, you have Donald Trump who has had lying Ted for Ted Cruz, and then you have little Marco for Rubio. Even he coined the term low energy Bush for Jeb Bush. So there, there's just been a lot of name calling this yeah. election. Yeah, well, he just had a taste of his own medicine. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So for the previous weeks, Amazon has been in the news a lot. What's been going on with the Amazon stocks lately? That's right, actually. So Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, just recently sold 1% of his stake in Amazon. And that 1% actually got him $671 million. Wow. Just 1%. Just 1%. Keep in mind, he owns another 17% of the company. And then what he actually did with that $671 million, 2 million of it actually went to a nonprofit organization. And then another 500,000 went to a third party that hasn't been disclosed yet. And it's interesting actually because his wealth, the reason that he sold 1% of his stake is that he wants to diversify his investments because 90% of his wealth is tied into Amazon, so he wants to diversify. Hey, Stefano, have you ever been to Chicago? I haven't, but I've actually wanted to go. Me too. Yeah, you know, actually, if you do decide to go, they're actually making this new Chicago skyline. Really? It's supposed to be 170 feet tall, and you're in this little glass gondola. It's transparent. Mm. It's going to be about $20 per person to ride. It's going to take about 30 minutes to ride. But the thing is, it's going to cost $250 million wow. to make. Mm. So people are now debating whether or not they want to do it. It's interesting also because one of the people actually who designed the London Eye, David Marks, he commented on the Chicago skyline and said, just like the London Eye, not only will it be better, you know, for tourists to be able to go around the city, but as well, it's a tourist attraction in itself, you know, you have like these giant transparent gondolas high above the city. I see, so I mean, apparently it looks like an economic. Mm -hmm. good it's a win-win. Well. That's exactly right. It'll be great revenue for the city of Chicago. So what else is happening with Donald Trump this week? Well, actually, a bunch of former Republicans are starting to say that they will support him. Um, former Vice President Dick Cheney uh, and the 1996 uh, Republican nominee Bob Dole have said that they will actually support him. Um, Cheney said that he's always supported Republicans and this year's not going to be any different. And Bob Dole said he's in the same boat. But actually, not all Republicans want to support Donald Trump. Really? I mean, who are the Republicans that don't support him? Well, first off, there's South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who said she will not support him at all. <laughs> and then the former Republican that was running for the nomination, Jeb Bush, said very harshly he will never support Donald Trump. Oh, okay. Well, it seems like Donald Trump can't keep himself out of the news. No. What's going to happen next? So Stefano, do you like meat? Yes. Do you like meat? Absolutely. Well, I love meat. Studies actually show that if you reduce or actually eliminate your meat intake for 17 years, your life expectancy can increase 3.6 years. Wow. Ooh, that's so a pretty good deal. Live longer. But I don't know if I could do that, man. I love meat. I know, that's, that's almost not enough time for me. I think it would have to be more time for me to really make that switch. <laughs> <laughs> So Embraer, which is actually a private jet company, their Lineage 1000 series of private jets, they have a new design for it called the Kyoto Airship. And what it is is that what they're trying to do is make their planes have more natural light. So you know how whenever you ride in an airplane you have those really teeny tiny windows? Yeah. Yeah. Well this time the plane is actually going to be covered with giant rectangular windows and then also there are skylights as well, which is just another word for you know, windows on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> 
So also another feature of these planes is that they're pretty expensive as well. They cost around 55 million to make. So wow. it's wow. pretty much just going to be for celebrities. But of course, I mean, normal people could rent them out, but it's like 8,000 pounds an hour. Wow. And then also another feature on these planes is that they have fine wool carpeting as well as white leather seats on them. Also, they have kitchens in them, they have dishwashers, they have espresso makers. So it's definitely for people that are trying to ride in style in the air. So it's pretty much a house in the air with a lot of windows. Mm, exactly. So more about nutrition, guys. There's been a recent craze about juicing. Have you guys heard about that? Yeah. I definitely have. Yeah, but you know, it's claimed to be really healthy for you. I mean, a lot of people are doing it, but studies have actually shown that juicing may be unhealthy for you. People have claimed they have irritable bowels, they've developed that syndrome, and just they didn't really feel good after they did do that. I've also heard from a couple of my friends that it's quite expensive to go through such things. So, I don't know, is it worth it? I mean, it's interesting also because with juicing, a lot of people will combine it with weight loss to where they don't eat anything besides drinking the juice. And what that can do, you know how you talked about the irritable bowel syndrome symptoms? Because those are actually caused by the body not being able to digest the sugars in the fruits and the vegetables. So by not eating anything else and juicing at the same time, those symptoms come up more, they come up more um, erratically. They come up more erratically and that actually is bad for you because then you're limiting your intake as well of calcium and iron which is found in other foods. I see, yeah, well speaking about the sugar, they say that juicing actually, it makes the sugars travel down to your bowels a lot faster which is what causes the irritable bowels. When you're chewing it, your body takes a little bit longer to digest those sugars but when you actually juice it, it makes it go directly down to your gut. So. When, it seems yeah. like the opposite of what you're trying to do. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so next time you decide to do something, you might do a little bit more research on it. Mm -hmm. So we all love Netflix here, right? Yes. Yeah, I have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever wondered how they pick the thumbnails for like the movies and TV shows? You know, that's interesting. I haven't thought about that. So Netflix actually released a new study where they showed how how they figure out how to pick those thumbnails. So there's a science behind it. Oh, definitely. Um, so they have it, they've narrowed it down to how to grab your attention in 90 seconds because they've discovered that if you lose, if you lose attention after 90 seconds, you're just going to go on to something else. Oh really? Yeah. So Netflix has 81 million subscribers. So that, that's a lot of people to take care of. So the research shows that users will actually spend about 1.8 seconds um, considering that title and that, that image. So. Netflix chooses that image based on your demographics, so your nationality and your gender. So wherever you are, net, that Netflix image is going to change. So what we see here in the U.S. is very different from what someone will see in like the U.K. or Germany. Oh, wow, I see. And I did also hear that, especially on the show Orange is the New Black, they put in a new study that says, okay, if you have seven people on the actual cover or the thumbnail, that you actually get less viewers than if you had one or less than three people on the cover. Yeah. You heard about that? I did actually. And another another thing that they found out about that is that if you show really expressive faces, or not even that, just really expressive faces of the villains in the show, it can actually get the attention of more people. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you show opposing characters to so like the hero and the villain, you're really going to capture attention. Mm. Yeah. It's like a lot of science goes into the thumbnails of Netflix. Definitely. So Microsoft actually unveiled a new technology at the Computer Human Interaction Conference in San Jose, California. And this new technology is actually precognition or pre-touch technology. Now what that is is that there are sensors built into their phones. And what that does is that, for example, when someone's holding their phone and they're about to, let's say, swipe their screen, what'll happen is that when they bring their finger up in front of the screen, the screen itself will then already show a list of commands or functions that you can do. So if you're watching a video, for example, and you wanna pause the phone while you're holding it, you bring your finger up and then the screen itself will already show the commands to, let's say, pause the video or fast forward. So before you even touch the screen, you just hover your finger over it. Yes. That. You would just hover your finger over and it would already sense that you want to, let's say, pause the video or fast forward. And these sensors as well on the phone, what they can do is that 
The phone can then tell which hands you're using in order to hold the phone. So if you're holding it with one hand, it can sense that, or if you're holding it with both hands, the sensor can see that, and they can actually reorient the controls depending on how many hands you're holding the phone with, as well as when it comes to the screen orientation. Oh wow, and Stefano, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that they actually use the Kinect technology. They did actually. They had built the Kinect technology based off of that for their video game system. Wow. That's amazing. So I actually heard there's some new developments with Siri happening. Well, actually, Siri has a competitor. I believe it's called Veep, and it's actually a personal assistant on the phone that is supposed to be better than Siri. For example, if you were to tell Siri, hey, I want to go to my brother's house for some lasagna and wine, Siri probably wouldn't know how to answer that. But with Vive, they actually have a technology that picks out certain words like lasagna or house or wine, and they would actually pull up different shops and different places where you can get that stuff, and even a map to go to your brother's house. So it actually writes the code as you speak, and it learns more and more and more about the way that you speak the more that you use it. So speaking of phones, um, a London-based research company has actually released some new studies that have shown um, how people are addicted to technology. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So their studies conclude that one in five people are have separation anxiety from their phones. Wow, separation yes. anxiety. Yeah, I probably fall into that category very easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's definitely me also. Right? So the study shows that 30% of all adults check their phone at least every 30 minutes. Really? What about people younger than 30? So about 46% of 18 to 24 year olds will check their phone every 15 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And I believe adults spend about, what, 20 years of their life looking at their phones? Yeah, the, yeah, so the study concluded that adults will spend the equivalent of 20 weeks just staring at their phone or a tablet screen. Mm -hmm. um, 20 weeks, okay. Yeah, 20 weeks. Um, and I think that adults uh, in the workplace will spend about two, the equivalent of two days staring at a phone or their computer screen. So I really think we're addicted to technology, guys. <laughs> So in recent research, they've actually shown that spending on a daily basis has gone down, but spending on special occasions has gone up. So for example, when you're spending money at the grocery store, they say that that spending has gone down 6%, and spending for shoes has gone down 3.5%. But at the same time, spending for airfare has gone up 6.5%, and specifically spending on restaurants has gone up 11.3%. So it's just really interesting where people's priorities are when it comes to spending their money. So basically, everyday items and everyday products are not getting spent as much as before as they are now. Exactly. People are saving up their money in order to spend more extravagantly. So more binge-like. More binge spending, basically. So some recent buzz has been going on about the world's biggest oil company, joining the London Stock Exchange, is that true? Yeah, so as it turns out, the largest oil company, Saudi Aramco, is selling 5% of their stock to investors. So what that's actually gonna do for them is that's gonna raise their already 1.7 trillion euros worth of company. It's gonna raise that by 85 billion euros. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, so this stock listing is gonna be in London, New York, and in Hong Kong. and. As, of, as far as we know, this is the largest listing in history. No one has ever done this before. Wow. Yeah. So Saudi Arabia is actually trying to wean off of their dependence of oil, but the Prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Sal Salman, actually there's speculation about him because people are saying that he's trying to start a war with Iran and that war is going to help them wean off of their dependence of oil. Yeah, absolutely. So Saudi Arabia is kind of an ad in an interesting position right now. They're the largest supplier of oil, but they're trying to wean themselves off of oil. Yeah, all the speculation from the biggest oil company in the world selling 5% of their stock. Yeah. All right. All right, that ends this episode of Cappuccino with Amber. I'm your substitute co-host, Kelly, here with... Stefano. And... The Guru. Catch you next time.